Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm going to show you 18 helpful shortcuts for looping in Logic Pro. Now, technically speaking, I'm going to show you more than 18 shortcuts, but I'm going to be sort of grouping some of these together. Now, by looping shortcuts, I'm not just talking about using loops. I'm also going to show you some interesting and helpful shortcuts for using the cycle range and locators for looping, meaning looping as a transport function, transposing and sampling loops, and even some live loops features that you may not have known about. So the first one is just how to open the loop browser. Most people already know this one, but you can just press O on the keyboard and this will hide or show the loop browser without having to click up here. And so you just save a mouse click without having to click up here. Now, if I drag in a loop and let's say that I want to loop the loop multiple times, you can just hover your mouse over the upper right corner of the loop to do this. The only problem with this method of looping if I change even one note in the original region, like if I like if I get rid of a couple of notes here, this actually affects all of the loops as well. So if you want the loops to be independent of the original region, what you're going to want to do is convert your loops to regions. This is a function that used to be called convert to real copies. And you can do this very simply by pressing control L and that will convert your loop into real copies of regions, and now you can individually edit each region. Number three is the repeat function. If you want to forego the entire converting to real regions, all you have to do is select a region and press Command R, and you can press that as many times as you like, and it makes a copy and repeats that region. And again, these are individual copies, so you can go in here and edit these individually without having to worry about them being affected by the original loop. Number four is the cycle range. If you want to make the cycle range active, most people know this, you can just press C, press C again to toggle it off. And the cycle range is effectively the loop range. It sets the left and right locators. So you've got the left locator over here and the right locator over here. Number five is skip cycle range. So what you can do is skip cycle range is you can make a certain section of a song skipped. So for example, if I wanted the main melody here to be skipped while I'm listening to this, I can just trim down the locators there and then hold command and click on the cycle range and this will put it in skip cycle range. Now if you have a number pad on your keyboard, you can also just press the equal sign on your number pad and this will turn on skip cycle as well. So let me show you what this does. So this can be helpful if you need to listen to something and you want to skip a whole section or maybe a part of a section. Number six is another cycle range shortcut that a lot of people don't know about. If you have a really long cycle range, maybe something like this, sometimes it can be kind of a pain to have to zoom all the way out like this and then grab the cycle locator and bring it in. However, if you want to make the cycle range a much smaller range and you don't want to have to zoom out to grab the locators, you can actually just hold shift while hovering your mouse over the ruler up here. And what you can do with this is you can shorten the cycle range from the left or from the right side. Now, it's only gonna go to the midway point. So you'll see if I hold shift all the way up to here, it's going to trim from the left and all the way from here, it's gonna trim from the right. So you can use this to sort of uh, trim the cycle range a bit easier. But if it's really, really zoomed out, it's going to be troublesome to do that still. But I could do something like this and say, okay, I just want this to be this eight bar loop. Or if I want to shorten this again, I can shorten it up to just these four bars. Now this next shortcut is actually two shortcuts. And this is kind of similar to what I was showing with trimming the cycle range. If you want the cycle range to wrap around a certain selection, you can use the shortcut Command U or just U. So for example, if I want the cycle range, let's say it's over here, and I want it to wrap around this region, all you have to do is select the region and press Command U, and it'll set the cycle range around that selection. So this sets the locators to the selected regions. 
or I could click down here and say, okay, I want to listen to this section. Just with those selected, I'll press Command U, and it sets the cycle range around the selected regions. Now, the reason why I said there's two shortcuts is there's actually Command U, and then there's U. If you just press U, in most cases, this is going to do the exact same thing, but pressing U sets rounded locators. And let me explain what that means. So let's say I want to loop the synth melody up here again. So I'll just select that and press Command U. If I were to use my marquee tool and maybe beat snap, and I were to trim this up halfway through the bar there, if I select this region and then press Command U again, you'll see it shortens the loop range or the cycle range. So Command U will set the cycle range exactly around the selection that you've made. Even if the selection is not trimmed up directly on a bar line, like maybe something like this, if you select that region and press Command U, again, you can see it extends the left side of the loop range. Now, if you want your loops to be rounded, essentially meaning that it's gonna set the loop range to the next nearest bar line, you can press U instead of pressing Command U. So you can see I've trimmed up the front end a bit here, and I've trimmed up the back end, and if I press U instead of Command U, you'll see that it actually sets the cycle range one bar before the section, and then to the next bar after where I trim this up. So that's a rounded locator selection, whereas Command U is an exact locator selection. Another helpful cycle range shortcut is doubling or halving the cycle loop range. So with cycle mode turned on, if I hold shift option command and then press either the comma or the period key, comma will have the cycle range length and it trims it over from the left. And then if I press that again, it'll trim it again down to four bars. If I press it again, it'll go down to two bars. Likewise, if I press shift option command period, this will double it and this trims over to the right. So I have four, now I have eight, now I have 16. Markers are really helpful in logic and sometimes you just want to listen to a certain section or you wanna to toggle to the next section. So these next two shortcuts I'm gonna show you, number 10 and 11, allow you to set the locators by marker. So if you select a marker and then press Control Option C, this will set the cycle range around the selected marker. Then what you can do is you can press Control Option, comma, or period, and what this will do is jump the selection to the previous marker or to the next marker. And you can see that it changes the length of the cycle loop selection based on the length of the marker. So this can be really helpful if you're trying to navigate around a project. For this next one, number 12, I'll show you how to move a region to the loop library. Now, I like to use a lot of third-party loops, in particular from Splice. Sort of like a hi-hat, snare, topper beat. So let me drag this into Logic. And one thing you'll notice here is that this is an eight-bar loop, but it's only going up to about seven bars. And that's because the tempo of the original loop is 136 BPM. I have two options here. I can change the tempo of my project to 136, and you'll see now it's an exactly eight-bar loop. But the other option, and this I'm not including this as a shortcut, but another option is you can set the snap mode to beat or bar, set the grid to absolute value, and then you can just hover the trim tool over the boundary of the region and then hold option and drag this out and you can make this exactly eight bars long. So you're essentially just warping or stretching the loop. However, this is not the shortcut I actually wanna demonstrate for this. So I'm gonna undo that and I'm actually just going to change my project over to 136. So let's say this is a loop that I like to use a lot and I want to add it to my loop library so I don't have to keep going back into Splice to access this loop. If you just select the region and you've set the tempo of the project to match the tempo of the loop, you can press shift Control o and this will bring up the Add Region to Apple Loops Library dialog, and you can give it a name. So I'll just call this Zenheiser Snare Hi-Hat Topper. You can choose between a loop or a one-shot. A one-shot's like a sample. The scale here is just gonna be neither since it's a percussion loop. Genre could be really anything. The key is none because it's a drum loop. 
And then you can set the instrument description here. So I'm going to go to all drums and then beats. And then you can give this some other descriptors. So I'll call this grooving, electronic, distorted, and processed. And then I'll click create. Then what this does is it adds it into your loop library. So if I ever want to use this again, I can just search up Zenheiser. And there's my Zenheiser snare and hi-hat topper. The great thing about this being a loop now is that it will actually conform to the project tempo. So for example, if I change the project to say 150, the loop that I manually dragged in isn't going to conform to the project tempo. But if I drag this in as an Apple loop, it will conform to whatever project tempo I'm working with. So I don't recommend you do this for all of your loops, but it can be helpful if you have certain loops that you use all the time or certain samples you use all the time and you want to store them permanently in your loop library. This next one, number 13, I want to show you how to convert a region to two different types of sampler instruments. Now, you're probably already aware that in Logic, you can drag any loop onto the track header here, and you can drop it into Drum Machine Designer, Alchemy, Sampler, uh, or even Quick Sampler and work with it that way. Another way to do this is you can click on a region and press Control E, and this will bring up the Convert Regions to New Sampler Track dialog. Now, you can add a whole region to a sampler track, or you can slice it up at its transient markers. And you can add this to Drum Machine Designer as individual samples, Alchemy, which I almost never use for sampling, as well as Sampler. So first, let's try this in Sampler. And you can also set these to one-shot zones. So when you trigger each of the samples within the loop, it'll play the whole sample instead of only for the note duration. So I'll click OK. And what's probably going to happen, yeah, it's going to start on C1, which is the starting note that it was set to. And you can see it maps the whole beat out chromatically. And if I were to bring up my musical typing keyboard on C1, I get that first sample. On C sharp, I'm, get, I'm getting that little shaker sound. Two different shaker sounds. And then at E, I've got the clap. So you can resequence the loop and make it your own original idea. Now, if you're really truly just trying to build like your own custom drum kit that is based on another loop, you could try shortening this quite a bit, just like so. I could probably even shorten this a bit more because there's really only like three samples in here that I need. Again, click on it, control E, select drum machine designer instead. Again, one shot zones at transient markers. Give it a custom name and then set your first trigger note range here, then click OK. And what this does is instead of creating a sampler instrument, it creates a drum machine designer instrument with individual custom samples. So I get a kick, a shaker, another shaker that's more dry, clap sample, another kick, another kick and another shaker. And you could rename these, you could set the icons. Maybe I want these shakers to be a bit uh, higher in pitch. I could pull them up. Maybe I could have one low one or one high one. I can add reverb to it. So it gives you a whole other dimension of creativity where you can take another loop and use the loop as the sound source for a new drum kit. And you can even add additional samples to this in addition to the loop samples. So that's convert region to sampler instrument or drum machine designer. It's just control E and you can do this with any audio region. This next shortcut is actually two shortcuts. And this has to do with transposing regions. It's not just loops, but I find it really helpful when I'm working with loops, especially outside third party loops to transpose them up or down by semitones or by a full octave. And this works with audio loops, this works with any audio region, as well as MIDI regions and MIDI loops. So I've got a beat here with just a drum beat, some electric piano, and an acoustic piano loop. Now let's say this is something where you have a singer on top of this and they need to hear this in a different key to fit their voice better. Maybe we need to transpose it up a couple semitones or 
down a couple semitones. Now, most people already know that you can drag over those regions, even multiples at once, like I've done here. And in the region inspector here, you just click here to show it, you can use the transpose feature to transpose things up by a certain number of semitones or down by a certain number of semitones. However, a really quick way to do this is just to select the regions and then press option up to transpose up semitones or option down to transpose down semitones. So again, here's the original key. Maybe I need to go up a couple semitones, so I'll just hold option and press up a couple times. Or maybe I need to go down a couple of semitones. And it shows you right there on the region how many semitones it's been transposed by. Now, the next shortcut is pretty much the same thing, but by octave. You just press shift option up or down, and this will transpose the regions up or down by a full octave. So again, that's just option up and down for semitones and shift option up or down for octaves. Now this next one is pretty well known, but if you drag over loops and you just press L, what this will do is loop the loop to the end of your project. So wherever your song project end is set to, that's where the loop will go. And then you could follow this up with a control L to convert to real copies or to regions. However, I actually find the shortcut more helpful when you're working in live loops. So if I go into my live loops grid here and I drag these over into the live loops grid, you'll see that all of them are loops because they're in this circle arrangement. Now, if for some reason you wanted something to just play once, you could select that cell and then press L. And what this will do is toggle the loop function of that cell, just like it loops out here in the tracks area. So if I want the electric piano to just be a one-shot cell that just plays once, I can press L to turn off the loop. And you can see on the second repetition, it does not loop the loop unless I press L, which will toggle it back to loop mode. And while we're talking about live loops, I'll show you three sort of bonus shortcuts here that I'm not going to count as part of my looping shortcuts, but you can hide and show live loops in the tracks area very easily by pressing option L for live loops, option N for the tracks area, and option B to show both live loops and the tracks area. So that's just a little bonus. But while we're talking about live loops, let's talk about some ways to bring loops into live loops and bring them back out of live loops. So for example, if I want all three of these loops to be in live loops, all I have to do is select the scene that I want them to go to. In fact, I'll select scene two here. If you select these regions and then press Command Home, so that's the Home button that's uh, near the Delete key just above the End key, this will copy those regions into live loops. Now, if you're working on a MacBook, you do not have a home key or an end key. I'm working with a full-size keyboard. However, there is a workaround for this. If you hold the function key and press the left arrow key, this effectively becomes the home button. So you can press command function left, and this will copy those loops over into live loops. Now, that function is only going to work if you're on a MacBook. If you're working with a full-size keyboard, just use command home. Likewise, if you want to copy cells out of live loops and bring them into the tracks area, you can't do this on a cell by cell basis for some reason, but you can do it on a scene by scene basis. And there is a function down here, a right click function where you can bring the scene over here, but there is a shortcut for this as well. And this is our last shortcut, number 18. This is command and the end key, which will bring all of the cells in that scene back over into the tracks area. And once again, if you're working on a MacBook, you don't have an end key. So the modifier for end is function right. So you'd press command function and then the right arrow key to do the same thing. So those are 18 helpful looping shortcuts in Logic Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. 
As always, thank you so much for the support, and thanks for watching.